what is going on welcome back to the rare element sports card podcast brought to you by the denver card show my name is a aaron i'm here with my boy jeremy what is up brother what up kicking it and chilling like always kicking it and chilling you know how it is you tuesday how we do tuesday night we must be kicking and chilling yep <laughs> <laughs> uh fucking uh had an awesome weekend. We had a little sports card show. Um, I'm representing the Pikes Perk. Oh, dude, I didn't even notice. <laughs> no, that is so dope. Yeah, fuck yeah. I was nice. I was bothering Brant until he broke yeah. down and got me one. I was That's like, dude, cool, give, me, give me a shirt, bro. Give me a shirt. And then he went and bought a nicer shirt. Like, oh. He went and got like the polo and yeah, he had look, the one up. looking good, That's looking dope. sharp. Bro, I don't even know how I didn't even fucking notice that. <laughs> well, we were fucking with the soundboard trying yeah. to get the phone call thing all situated, but uh, we got her ready to go. Nice. Um, so that brings us to the podcast. You want to jump on in, my brother? I suppose we shall. Cool. So um, our podcast is made up of three elements. Um, the first element this week and every week is the cardboard element, which is sports card news. And uh, this week we're going to have a little interview with a special guest, uh, Mr. John Scanlon. He is also the proprietor of the Denver Card Show, our sponsor, our homie. And he's got a little little story to tell. So we're going to have Mr. Scanlon come on this week and uh, give us a little something-something. And then we're going to finish it with some sports. Oh, yeah. You ready to jump on in? I think I am. Let's rip that shit. Let's rip that shit. I want to fucking do something real quick. Fucking uh, Every time we rip that shit from now on, I'm just going <laughs> to rip a couple of random packs. Uh, they might be something. Ex- I mean, they're never going to be something expensive. But who knows? I may get a hobby box eventually or do... Uh, some uh, cellos or something fun, but it's always just going to be something random, and it's just, we're going to rip that shit out. Ooh, nice. So today I'm going to rip open a box of 1990 Pro Set Series 1. Uh, so too bad I don't think there's Emmett Smith rookies in there. I think those were only in Series 2. Series 2, yeah. But these are the, I'm hoping for one of those hologram cards that I've always yapped about. Oh, check that out. That's pretty sweet. Not only is it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have to actually crack that sucker. Yep. It's not like how boxes are now. Once you take the cellophane off, you have to. You have to actually cut it open. Parallel uh, perforations. I mean, I opened quite a bit of this shit back in the day. <laughs> so I'm just gonna crack a couple packs. You want to cheers one up with me? Let's yeah, crack them open. Absolutely. See what the fuck's going on in this. Absolutely. Get a Lombardi is mine, but anything else. Dude, that'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> you could have anything else. <laughs> there we go. That's pretty sweet. Super Bowl. Thirteen, Eric Metcalf, Super Bowl fourteen. Oh, sweet Bo Jackson, dude! That'll go into the little piece thing right oh, there. Oh, nice. Troy Aikman, Brian Sosha. Ooh, Greg Cragen, Denver Bronco, oh, nice. Pro Bowler, dude, a Pro Bowl. Yep, nose tackle, Pro oh, Bowl nose dude, tackle. Dude, instant win! I could go to freaking what is the <laughs> <laughs> a trip to the Pro Bowl. Andre Tipton. Oh, man. Scratch game, son. Oh, Gary Zimmerman. Uh, he's there with Minnesota, but he's uh, was part that of that. That might be his rookie, or I don't know. What is your, no, his rookie's like 80-something, 80 87. or I would say something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. But he um, was a Hall of Famer with the Broncos Sweet. offensive line. He, he blocked for TD as he rushed for 2,000 yards. Fucking A, he did. Mike Munchak, our former offensive line coach. It's all Broncos in this These pack. Fun, bro. Ted Hendricks. Eric Metcalf. Dan Marino. And a Bruce Smith. Oh, I, I have a chance to win. Yes. They're probably winning every pack. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing big. No, I mean, there's not really going to be anything big in them, but they're, they're mostly just for fun. They're for fun. It's for fun. And there is the chance of one of those Lombardis. And actually, the cool story about the Lombardi, too, that I just found out, uh, a little another fact about that, is uh, they're numbered to 10,000. They paid a calligrapher to hand write the back. Remember, I was telling you, yeah, I was telling you about yeah. that. It looked like it was handwritten. Mm-hmm. And it, they paid him like eight dollars a card to do that. Oh, nice! And uh, they've only ever found uh, nothing over nine thousand has ever surfaced. Really? So they think they just they were just inserting them into packs and cases or boxes or whatever until they stopped selling them. Mm-hmm. And so they th- that's why there's a lot of them that, that are. They're not numbered or they're like uncut and little shit like that. So I think they made them, but they just never finished. They made, right. You know what I mean? Right. They, they didn't make that many boxes. Mm. So I, with the millions of boxes that there are, and they still only put out 9,000 of those fucking things. Right. I wonder. Probably they're like one in every three cases or some shit is the story I heard, but. Hmm. 
Uh, that's that's pretty cool though. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even believe they existed until a few years ago when I finally started buying them. <laughs> <laughs> the Great White Buffalo. Great White Buffalo. Great White Buffalo. But anyway, that was that was that, and uh, for fun, it's for fun. It's for fun. We lose because you're fat. Yeah, and then actually, in order, you know, before we get too far in, uh, we're gonna do a little a little little giveaway. I know this isn't nothing too crazy. Maybe you might find one of those gold mirrors, or uh, there's supposedly those uh, magical. Missing cards in these, right? <laughs> uh, what are they calling them? The hidden gems or something? Hidden? Something like that. Something. Yeah. That nobody's found yet. And John Scanlon has an interesting theory about that, too. We'll have to hit him up. <laughs> right. That'd be part of it. I think he said a buddy of his has a sca- uh, theory about it. But, yeah, I'll ask him. I always love hearing theories. Yeah. Break out the tinfoil hat, baby. <laughs> like the <laughs> X-Files music. Yeah. <laughs> I fucked it up. No, I, got, I, I <laughs> understood what you were doing. Uh, I understood. Yeah. After all those shenanigans, let's do this. Let's do this. That's a rip that sheet. Um, so the first uh, topic under the cardboard element this week is going to be about TikTok. Um, there was all a whole bunch of rumors and videos and YouTubers going nutty over the past week about TikTok banning breaks. And apparently it wasn't correct. Yeah. Apparently it was uh, they're banning certain mystery type pack type of things as well as like branding selling on the platform without going through like TikTok's marketplace that they're creating. They're, they have one? They I think they're in the works of it. Uh, but I, I I don't know if they're actually cutting people off because I saw some breaks on there last night. Hmm. So I think that's like to come like you can't break or can't sell unless it's through our shit. Um so they can get a cut. So they can get a cut. They like the government. They like to get their piece. So um um, I actually heard about it on Sports Cards Nonsense. Yeah. And uh, they, they did a little research and they found out that it wasn't that. Um, people were flipping the fuck out, bro. Like, some people have their whole breaking business on TikTok. Yeah, I had no idea it was that big on there. Yeah, I didn't either. I thought it was, like, mostly YouTube and IG and stuff. Yeah. But apparently there's a lot of it going on on TikTok. Yeah. Um, but it looks like it was, like, kind of a... You can't do it unless it's through our shit, dog. Yeah. So... What what are your thoughts about that situation, bro? Like, is it do people in the hobby, especially content creators, like jump way too quickly without knowing the facts on shit? Do you think do you think we're getting like the true story a lot of the times about all the stuff that happens and people just talk about it and yeah. they don't really know? Yeah, I mean that's yeah. Everybody just wants to be the first one to announce everything anymore, you know? Yeah. That's why so many celebrity deaths get fucking <laughs> out <laughs> right. there sometimes. You right, know? yeah. That, that slowed down a lot, but there for a while it was like, man, somebody died again. I was like, oh, yep. psych. Psych. <laughs> I was watching uh, John Witherspoon. He was on yeah. Joe Rogan uh, about a year or two ago, and uh, his was like all the time, bro. Like everybody kept saying that he died all the time, and – Joe Rogan even asked him, he's like, why is everybody fucking <laughs> saying that you're dead? And he's like, I don't know. He's like, I get calls all the time. He's like, people are calling me up. Like, you still okay? He's like, yeah, I'm drinking my wine. I'm, I'm fine. But, like, he was one of them, bro. Like, yeah. they, all the fucking time, people are saying John Witherspoon was dead. And then he finally died. Yeah. Then he actually died. Boo. Boo. But, yeah, he was he was one of my favorites, dude. Yeah, he was fucking good. Yeah. Every time I'm in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. Eating up all the food. <laughs> I wanted some of those chicklins. I love pig's feet. Dude, that's the all-time line right there. Uh, how long? <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> he sucks his fingers yep. off. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Boomerang? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh man. Yeah. His, his... You got to whip that pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be pussy whip, but... That was the best ever, dude. He's like, I got the mushroom shirt. He's like, I got you got to coordinate. <laughs> got the mushroom belt. He's like, you know your dad got the mushroom belt. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> but uh, shout out to John Witherspoon. Rest in peace, man. That shit, that motherfucker was awesome. Um, but yeah, dude. <clears throat> I, I'm sure that we're even like guilty of this sometimes because like I yeah. don't I don't research like go down deep down into the depths. I'm not a journalist. You know, we're just doing the pod. We talk about sports card news. We talk about stuff we hear, and most of it I get from Sports Collectors Daily. Um, they are pretty much journalists, so like most of the stuff we get is from there. 
um, for the cardboard element anyway. And, you know, a lot, some of it comes from YouTube. Some of it comes from just shit that I hear. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we're kind of guilty of it sometimes. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not like, I think for the most part, we're pretty good about not saying it's a fact. We're saying, usually say that so-and-so said this or that. Or right. Just like relaying a message almost. Yeah. You know. It's like a retweet. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, if we fuck up and we do say some shit about something that's not, you know, comes out to be true, we'll say it, you know. Yeah, I usually call. try to go out of our way to apologize or say something if we fucked up or if somebody ever calls us out and shit, let mm-hmm. us know and shit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But, yeah. Well, most of the shit we talk about is not like. It's not life or death. Too, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not like about the. Uh, Conflict between Russia and Ukraine. It's like we're talking about <laughs> talking about. Oh man, they uh, didn't put the Julio Rodriguez cards in those boxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude. I don't know. I I didn't realize TikTok was such a major player in the hobby. Really, I mean, we have a TikTok channel and we put on little snippets here and there, but we don't put a post a lot on there, and I don't really interact with people on there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know it's like huge. And it's like the place to be, I guess, right now as far as social media shit goes. But yeah, I didn't know you could uh, go. I thought TikTok was supposed to be like short videos. I didn't know you could sit there going live for like right an hour or whatever. Yeah, long enough to do a break. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that either. I thought it was like you said, like fifteen seconds or yeah. something. That's like the old man talking about. I was about to say old ass mother. Yeah, <laughs> talking about young kid shit and. Then, I didn't know. I've been trying to tell some of these younger people I know, you got to teach me TikTok, and they're like, <laughs> no, I'm like, no, seriously. No, no, I'm for real. <laughs> I'm not fucking around. <laughs> yeah, no, I got to. And, and see, I don't, this is old, this is get off my lawn moment for me for sure, but like, I don't get, I don't like watching those stupid little videos. I don't really get it either. You know, like I'll yeah. watch them, but like most of the shit they throw at me is like 18 year old girls half naked. I mean, and I mean, if they're at least 20, something that's cool. <laughs> and I, it's just like, I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world, but it makes me feel like an old creeper. Like I'm like someone through and like, Oh, oh damn, Jesus Even Christ on our card one, dude. It's like, that's all. If you go like actually like search, mm-hmm. it's all that comes up. Yeah. If you, if you click on like search before you even key anything in, it's just all titties. <laughs> <laughs> And how can you help but like, click on a few, you know? <laughs> I wish I had more hands so I could give those titties <laughs> four thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, dude. Like, it's hard It's hard to even search out some things. I was looking for a cabinet for my mom the other day. She was like, hey, help me find this cabinet online. And I was looking, and I just search simple things, dude, and fucking all kinds of shit would come up. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, don't look at this, Mom. Don't look. <laughs> my dad is on my YouTube. I have my premium sub and I put it on their TV because I'm over there all the time. And my dad's watching my YouTube. So, like, my algorithm's all fucked up. It's like got my shit and his shit. So, it's like sports card breaks and hunting and fishing videos. And, like, and uh, every now and again, I'll watch some pretty girls. <laughs> I'll watch some, <laughs> some Victoria's Secrets models or, like, I'll, I'll be looking for a video or, like, a picture of a video of a girl that I'm like, oh, yeah, she's hot. I'm going to watch that video. And it'll pop up on his shit because he's, like, look, searching through. <laughs> My mom gets all butthurt, bro. <laughs> she's like, what's that? Recently viewed or watch again or some yeah. shit like that. Watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> watch it for the 77th time. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure my dad's clicked on him a time or two when my mom's I not mean, around. He's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's funny, dude, to watch that dynamic. Like, I kind of forget, and I'm like, oh, god damn it. I, I probably shouldn't watch those on YouTube. Yeah. And it's not, like, porn or anything. It's no. just, like, a scene. It's like Mila Kunis, you know, like, hot in the bikini. Super, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if I should, should say that in the pod. We might get canceled for even saying that I watch videos of pretty girls. Mm, I don't know. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> we haven't been canceled yet. I did say titties a few times already. Right. And we say it. We push Big Dave Chappelle say it almost every book of pop. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, dude. We were. So if we don't get busted for that. We, <laughs> we had uh, Scott Wright from Next Jam. We did an interview with him at the Denver Card Show. And I was like, man. 
I should probably tell him like what our pot is. <laughs> like, I don't know if you, he's like, and you're like, well, we're not that bad. We just say shit and fuck. I'm like, no, <laughs> we actually talk about like anal friendly dicks and we talk about titties all the time. Like, I don't know, man. We probably should let him know. <laughs> Our bad. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's for fun. It's just for fun. Sorry, it's not for kids. We like kids or whatever and all that. I mean, they I right, but. I don't. <laughs> I don't like kids. I don't like kids at all. I like them at the show. I, I mean, they are right. Sometimes at the show. Yeah. I like some kids. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. some kids. Most kids, no, though. Yeah. I mean, most kids, I don't really care for them, to be honest. Fucking don't like him at all. I didn't have him for a reason, you yeah. know. I I didn't have him for a reason. Yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> if we're not back next week. <laughs> if we get canceled for hating kids and talking about titties, my bad. <laughs> we'll be alright. <laughs> it's not our target target audience. It's really not. We're not. We're putting the content out for the homeboys. We're, we're more of the uh, oh. 15 to 59 demographic. Male, 15 to 59 demographic. <laughs> like 18, we'll say. 18 yeah, to 59. I mean. <laughs> oh, shit. But for all you youngsters out there on TikTok, um, yeah, send us some videos and show us a lesson or two because we don't know what, really how to do that. Word. But we'll see what happens with that. Um, we'll see what happens with that marketplace that TikTok is putting implementing and what, what that all entails. And uh, we'll see if it's even worth, like, looking at, looking for stuff to, like, find cards on there or something. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I've never bothered trying to look up, to buy cards on there or anything for sure. No. So. No, I haven't either. Apparently people do. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. But, uh, yeah, we'll move on. Um, we'll move on to our next topic. Um, the next topic under the cardboard this week is about PSA. Word. Uh, PSA is teaming up with Dave and Adams and they are opening up a submission like kiosk at the Dave and Adams store in Amsterdam, bro. Um, or the Netherlands, my bad, the Netherlands Okay, where Amsterdam is in the Netherlands, but I think it's in a different city. I can't remember that. I, I didn't write it down, but it's in a city in the Netherlands. Word. Um, how big of a deal is this? Do you think to like for the growth of the hobby? Do you think like, PSA stretching out to Europe is like going to really help and going to push a lot of people into the hobby over there. Um, I don't know. They already had that thing going on over there that got fucked up. Obviously, PSA Europe or whatever the fuck it was called. Oh, like, that's right. P- was it PSA Europe or PSA UK? UK. Yeah. yeah. So they had that scandal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they, they had that. They did that Mark's cards thing. That's right. Uh, but so I, I mean, I imagine there's got to be some demand. Obviously, mm-hmm. so a void to fill. Uh, David Adams is a pretty established name, so I had no idea they were over there as well. Mm-hmm. I had no idea Netherlands was big enough to have something like that either, or to be the the hub of all that, basically for the area, for the you know, yeah, for Europe. At the, you know, maybe they'll add some more. In, yeah, you know, other countries. In Europe. Maybe in London or like yeah, somewhere. That's what yeah. I would have expected first, but yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, me too. But maybe they pissed off too many people there <laughs> last time or whatever. I don't know if that was in London. But <laughs> I know it was in England, but you fucked me over, you fucking wanker. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, man. I I was it kind of like made me say, "All right, PSA, all right." You know, if they're if they could get a foothold in Europe, I think that's kind of big. It's kind of a big deal. Um, if there's enough cards that are being sold there to have a demand for people to want to grade. So they're grading them there? Uh, no, they're sending them over. So they're like, they are shipping them back and forth. Mm-hmm. They're collecting them and then sending them to the California office, which I thought was kind of weird. Do you think they'd go to the New York? That is weird. Um, but, yeah, the one in Santa Clara, I believe. Or No, 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 mm. not Santa Clara. It's in It's in the L.A. area. You would almost think it would be easier to just set up shop over there. Right, right. Shipping everything back and forth all that way. Mm-hmm. I guess you're making the customers pay for the shipping probably, though. So, mm-hmm. And I bet that shippy, shipping cost is pretty hefty, dude. Yeah. I bet it's expensive. But I'm sure, yeah, the customers are eating that. Yeah. Um, but they're having some shows. Like, I, I saw, like, there was How a... How could that be worth it? Well, with the grading costs and the shipping like that? <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Unless it's, it's like, something huge, you know, like... Yeah. Big, big cards. Yeah. 
Mm. But I mean that that shows your commitment and your love for the hobby. If you're gonna pay that much to send them over and get and them graded, people are addicted to that shit too. So mm-hmm. they love grading cards. Mm-hmm. I do. It's fun. Wow, uh, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Dave and Adams, they're like you said, they're a pretty well established name, and that's that's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Do you think that there's opportunities in other countries that, that you know, like PSA or Beckett or any of these other grading companies, or, or even probably, I would say probably just PSA at this point in time, um, do you think there's any other places where there's opportunities where they could s- set up or, like, have something similar like this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think Beckett could just because of the name. I don't know how successful they would be, but people still fucking rock with Beckett fucking magazine, bro, like dummies, but whatever. <laughs> uh Oh, yeah, dude. I definitely think uh, Japan, of course, or somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, other countries in Europe, you know, uh, probably who knows China, maybe. I don't know. China's kind of weird with everything. But, you know, there's uh, Australia. There's yeah. A lot of collectors in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. There are, we actually get some listens in Australia. Yeah. We get like, you know, two to three every episode on, nice. on, on the audio side. So, Fuck yeah. If you're in Australia and you're listening to you, to us, man, fucking, we absolutely love your ass. Yep, send us some kangaroo meat. That's right, some kangaroo backstraps. Damn. <laughs> I've heard kangaroo meat's good. Yeah. I've heard that from at least two people. I would try it. I'd check it out. I'd check it out. Uh, I was I saw a meme the other day on on Facebook, and it was like, American deer, Australian deer. Like, and it was fucking, he was all flexing. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, damn, like. They're like gnarly little fucker, big fuckers. Yeah. I'd hate to go toe to toe with one of those. Oh, hell no, I'll run. If I was like out camping, I ain't, sleeping in I my ain't tent with one of them, just here. I'll fuck with a bear over a fucking <laughs> kangaroo. <laughs> I know, right? I have a fighter's chance with a bear. The kangaroo, he'd fucking punch me up. Yeah, I could probably at least outrun a bear for a minute, maybe. Right? Oh, there's <laughs> no, there's no outrunning a fucking kangaroo. <laughs> He'd fucking catch me and give me a quick two piece, pop pop, yeah. and fucking be out. I'd just stomp be there, on bo- you. be there bleeding. Fucking just fucking thomp on you, <laughs> <laughs> thomp in your head like bit dribble in your head like a basketball <laughs> with his back feet. Over there drinking my beer, <laughs> drinking a Foster's. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, but no, I mean, there's definitely a lot of especially UFC fans in in Australia. But uh, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people in some of the uh, like Facebook groups and shit and. They ask if, you know, that's always a, a challenge for them is to get cards or to p- get people to trade with them or to sell them to cards because they got to pay so much for shipping. Or if they're trying to sell the cards, you know, right. they got to fucking charge $20 shipping or some shit. And yeah, I see I see some Australia on uh, eBay sometimes, some yeah. sellers, and that shipping is horrendous. Yeah. You're like, fuck. It's like, damn. You have what to drop. What you going to do? Yeah. Like, you're going to have to drop the price on that a little bit, dog. I bought a few things from Canada. I mean, it's usually a little more, but it's not crazy. Yeah, it's not too, too bad. Like 12, 13 bucks. It takes a little longer, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. But Yeah, yeah. I bet I bet you can score some dope-ass hockey cards out of Canada. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I've actually gotten quite a few good UFC cards from up there. I don't know. Really? Yeah. That's cool. We get a lot of listeners in Canada, actually. Yeah. Probably 20 an episode. Bam. Biggity bam. Looking nice. Yeah. But I always it, wanted to go to Canada, eh? <laughs> I did I have two That would be cool I'd like to go um, Do some fishing up there There's like some Northern pike fishing Would be crazy good up there Wow And I, I was I would I think I would like to hunt up there But there's Motherfucking grizzly bears up yeah, there Yeah that's just like A little different bro that's So like I don't straight know fucking work bro That's like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah That's some real fucking man shit I'm like mostly man I'm a 75% man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I could spend a week in the Colorado mountains, but yeah, I don't know. Up there, I don't know, man. There's monsters in those hills. Freezing balls, too. Fucking man. cold, 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 cold. And giant monsters, dude, and mm, wolves. There's yeah. like gray wolves up there, and fucking grizzlies, and, and cats. anything you do hunt or hit, it's monster too. Right, you're yeah. gonna shoot a moose or a fucking, fucking caribou. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Like, it, you better hope you kill it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come better fuck you a, up. Better have a fucking group of fucking homies with you. Right, or an RPG. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Up there in Canada, it's, it's real. It's real up there. Even as far north I, as, like, Wyoming and, like, yeah. Montana, it oh, gets yeah. real up there. Look at that. Yeah. 
But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if PSA, you know, decides to expand in other places. Um, I thought that was pretty cool, though. I was like, I, I, I like that. Have you ever bought anything from David Adams or anything? No, no, I never have. Have you? I don't know. I want to say I have off of Facebook maybe a box or something at one point, but I'm not positive. No, no, I haven't. I would like to. Yeah. <laughs> I always like to buy cards. It's always a fucking on the list of shit to do. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we'll move on, bro. We'll yeah. move on. We'll get off of that, and uh, we'll move to our third topic under the cardboard, which is the Pikes Peak Card Show. Uh, we had that Pikes Peak. Nice. We had that show this last weekend up at the Norris Penrose Arena, and uh, it was an awesome show as usual. Um, Jeremy and I both set up, and uh, how would it go? How was the show for you, brother? It was nice, man. It was busy as fuck. Uh, moved moved down to back to my kind of like normal spot. Uh, it was that was uh probably the most sales I've ever had in a day, besides maybe the All Cards Weekend. I think really probably our All Cards Weekend was a little better than that, but it was it was big. It was a good day. Sold a lot of UFC, picked up some nice UFC, uh, moved a bunch of cards, man. It was it was a good time. Moved moved some junk out of my closet, moved a bunch of old bobbleheads and shit. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it was a blast, dude. Fucking, how about you, man? Um, it was good. It was good. I didn't I didn't do as good as I did the last Pikes Peak show, but it still did pretty good. Nice. Um, not, not too bad. I forgot to bring the fucking pickups. No, no I show didn't. and tell for you. Did no you? show and tell for me. What did um, you get though? I know you got. Um, we picked up a couple of decent little slabs. Um, I got um a nice Joel Embiid um select courtside out of thirty nine. I want to say in the PSA ten, it was a cool card. It wasn't his rookie. I think it was like his second or third year, but it's a cool card. I uh, got a couple of Aaron Judge rookies. Um, picked up um a Kenny Pickett RPA. Um, oh nice. It was it was a decent little card. That's good. Um, I picked up. What else? You could always take pictures on your and put them on the computer and show them on the stream deck. I no? can, yeah, Maybe? I can, yeah. With the little, little, little tinker, little tinkering, little preemptive. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you don't have to travel with your cards. I don't mind though. I don't care to travel with them. I just fucking can't remember <laughs> to bring them. Um, some of them went to Springs with Jorge. Oh, cool. So I. They so got stayed up there. Yeah, there. yeah. We got some stuff mixed up. So I was gonna make a little pickup video for Pikes Peak show, but I, I was like, I only have about four or five cards with me. Um, also got a at trade night that night. John's uh, sports cards collectibles in Springs had a trade night, um, which usually coincides with the Pikes Peak show. Yeah, and I picked up um, a nice Nikola Jokic auto in a. SGC nine, I think SGC oh, ten. Yeah, that was cool. I picked up one of those that Spectra. I think it's Spectra. Spectra, right? yeah. Green, mm-hmm. green scope or something. Yep, yep. For Mister DC, um, good deal. DC as, as always. Um, picked. Oh, I picked up a couple of Joe Burrows from uh, Mister uh, Anthony uh, South. He came off on some Burrows. He did, dude. I couldn't believe it. What? He wouldn't come off of the ones I really wanted <laughs> yeah. though. He had some really nice Joe Burrows. Um, but that's about it. A few smaller things. Right on. Yeah. Well, let's see. I picked up a couple little slabs, too. These are kind of my favorites of what I picked up. I picked up a few more things. But uh, 2018 Donruss Optic uh, MPJ autograph. Picked it up for a hell of a deal. I don't know. I, I thought it was crazy cheap. But it was, wasn't, was like, insanely deal. But That's nice. I think, uh, you know, good time to pick it up. Uh, it's an on-card autograph, bro, like, rated rookie, optic, 10. The yeah, fuck, the can't, fuck, can't be that. The fuck, Mike. The fuck. Yeah, that's a nice card, bro. So if they go deep in the playoffs, you know, might be a might be a decent little flippy flip. Yep. Uh, picked up a 1957 Tops Clemente, f- kind of for the semi-PC-ish, or sort of, I don't know, might <laughs> hang out in the box for a little while and then end up at a show, but... The semi PC, <laughs> pretty dope. I, I like Clemente cards. That was kind of my dad's guy, so I pick up a few Clementes when I can. Oh, nice. Uh, and then I picked up Goose Gossage. Kind oh, of, kind nice. of a hometown guy, Colorado Springs guy. Yeah, so yep. he's he's semi local, or he's local to Springs, obviously. Uh, autograph on card. This is Tops Chrome. This is from the uh, anniversary edition. the The most recent uh, was like twenty. I guess it was a twenty twenty one set. Um, but it's pretty sweet. Um, 
kind of kind of cute. It's uh, numbered out of 15. Oh, nice. So, pretty dope. I love those refractors. And let's see if we can see a little serial number action on there. Whatever. <laughs> Can't always get the great focus. Focus. Wow, he looks weird in his picture. That's what I was going to say. He has like a freaking goofy, weird, weird little smile going on. And yeah. Uh, and then trade night as well. Swoop this up from uh, the homeboy Anthony, of course. Not to fucking give him too much props, but he gave me a pretty cool card. <laughs> uh, Bo Jackson, autograph, numbered out of 25. So, pretty sweet. Is that going in the PC? Mm, I don't know. I've got a few other Bo Jackson autos, so I'll kind of have to analyze it and see which one I like better. And and I might I might keep I'll keep one for sure. But yeah, let me uh, know. I might have a, a buyer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably sell at least one of them. Uh, but yeah, I, I just picked it up in a trade, a trade night, just to kind of make a deal with the homie and and have a good time, man. That's a nice clean auto. It, it might go to the PSA. I don't know. We'll see. I'm have to double check. I haven't been uh picking up too many graders lately, so we'll see. God, it's hard to get that whole twenty rounded up sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Damn, that's sick, dude. That's a beautiful card. It's got a cool picture on it, though. Yeah, it does. His autograph looks nice, too. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. Barely, barely, barely goes off that bottom of that sticker, but, like, barely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you got some nice pickups, dude. Yeah, I don't know. He looks like, I don't know, he looks all old, too, in that. Like, it's almost he like. He looks all goofy. Yeah. I remember he used to do, like, uh, commercials for, like, car dealerships and springs and stuff, like, mm-hmm. on the radio. Like, this is Goose Gossage. Gossage. And, like, you talk about, like, advertising shit. Yeah. Yeah. I met him once a long time ago at a card show in uh, Walsenburg, I want to say. Really? Yeah. No shit. Yep, a tiny little card show. Wow. Walsenburg, for those that don't know, is a little town. Yeah. About half hour south of here, maybe 40 minutes, 45 Ooh, yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. And it's a small town. I figure I might as well finish my little uh, uh, show and tell real quick. Do oh, yeah, for sure. Quick little... Uh, little half of a reveal or so of some of my cars I got back from uh, SGC recently. SGC! So I sent these through Bobbles and Ball Cards, Group Submitter on Facebook. So uh, 18 bucks a card. They only send out once a month, so it's not as fast as like Nash. I think I brought it up before. Nash, I think, charges like 20 bucks. But they send out pretty much weekly or pretty regularly, whereas these guys, they only send out once a month. So if you're not in a huge hurry, 18 bucks a pop. It's a pretty sweet deal. And uh, so far, it's been pretty pretty smooth process. So, I got a Poe Dameron, orange, orange out of ten. That's dope. Orange refractor. Uh, I'm not out of ten. That's a SGC ten. Excuse me, numbered out of twenty five. So Poe Dameron, uh, he's uh, he died in uh, Rogue One. <laughs> no, he was in uh, he was in the new ones. He was in the the, yeah. tri- the new trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. So then... That's a sick car, dude. We got these 1963 Stancraft playing cards. These are just uh, like playing cards like for playing poker with. But they were NFL teams. And back in 1963, it was just the NFL. Oh, nice. So there was only, what, uh, 13, 13 teams or something on there? I don't know. But uh, that's a joker. With the NFL shield on it. Nice. SGC 8.5. So That's cool. The For being as old as they are and they're just being playing cards, they're kind of pretty vintage I didn't mind the 8.5 on there. So another hometown hero. We You've heard us probably talk about him on the pod a couple times. Dutch Clark. Local guy. Pueblo. 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 <laughs> so that one's an 8.5. Uh, he has very few cards, so uh, kind of hard to find cards of him. So I thought that one was cool. That, one's that's cool. that real, one will go into the PC. For that's real cool. Yeah. I've been looking at a couple of little autographs of his on like uh, uh, little pieces of paper and little letters and things like that. And Drew's been kind of showing me some on eBay. He's been kind of enticing me to go and get one. <laughs> Uncle Drew! So I'll probably have to end up swooping one eventually and uh, maybe slapping in a little authentic slab or something like that. Uh, so John Jones, heavyweight champ. We've been talking about him a little bit recently. That's his rookie card. Oh, SGC nice. 9. That's a really tough grade. Uh, these these uh, first year first this is a uh, first year top second uh, series round two. Nice. So that's a uh, might be a hundred fifty dollar card. So it's pretty pretty nice little card there. 
that actually was the one that went to PSA, came back A7, and I knew that that was kind of weird. So sent it to SEC and got my nine. Damn. It, that's Honey, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and that was the only grade that came back that I was questionable. You know what I mean? Pretty much yeah. everything else, the, uh, the last few PSA subs was pretty much dead on. And that one, I just thought it was weird. Yeah. Cracked Seven. it out. Still didn't see anything really wrong with it. I mean, it doesn't look perf, but, you know. There's slight chipping on the back. Little but tiny n- but on not, the edges there, but not bad at all, yeah. dude. Ah, uh, that's not a seven. This one turned out pretty cool. My play with this one was I knew it wouldn't get a PSA 10, but I thought it was better than a PSA 9. So I sent it to SEC hoping for a 10, but I got me a 9.5. No, oh, nice. So I'll take that. I'll take a SEC 9.5 over a PSA 9. I mean, yeah. barely, barely, but. I would you know. too, yeah. And that's autograph numbered out of 25 too, so that's a pretty fucking sweet card. Rookie, your down. A little World Series uh, hero there. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's a good card. So I thought it might have a chance at a 10, but I saw like one little thing and I was like, mm, I think we'll try that one. It's pretty centered. Yeah, the centering's barely off. I think I saw like a corner. There's like one little corner with a little. Oh, yeah. Kind yep. of a little, little just a, something. Just there, a but. baby bump, though. And it looks bigger now that it's in the slab than it did before I sent it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to blame them for fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Might just be the way it reflects in there or whatever, but. <coughs> you know, who knows? They could fucking nudge it, bro. Yeah. Whatever. Especially if it's already soft. Baseball card club. Yeah, that's a nice baseball card, though, right? Oh, fuck yeah. That's a banger. That, and I think he's has the potential to be a big-time player. Yeah. And big I picked time. it up for a pretty good deal. Now that it's graded, too, it's it's got a little premium to it. So Yeah. I did I. That's a dope card. And then probably my favorite card from the, that sub was going to be this guy right here. And I think I showed a picture of it. It seems like it looks... All, oh, I forgot to take the sleeves off. That's why they look so crappy. But that's okay. You just get a little reflection. Yeah. Yeah, from our studio lights. Um, Yeah, they just don't come out quite as clear either. But uh, I think I showed this when I first picked it up. I got it from Park's Fleet and uh, ended up sending it in, getting it graded, came back to 10. It's one of my favorite cards that I have now. That's so, sick. Thanks, Park's Fleet. He's yep. giving me some of my favorite shit that I own, just like all the homies. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's always hooking up with the dopest shit. Yeah, for sure. So... Yeah, for the show. That was it. Was a great time. It was a great show. It was uh, that kind of came back. I came home to that, so that was dope. Yeah, came home to the box. I was like, oh, nice. Let me uh, let me dip right in before yeah. I unload. Let me rip into some more cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking a, dude. Um, yeah, I had a great time at the show. Had a lot of fun. It's always fun. Um, Jorge came and was relieved me on the table for a little while, so I was able to. Do a couple of rounds and bullshit with a couple of guys. Um, more than I have been in the last couple of shows, so it was nice. Yeah, that's cool. I saw that. That uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's always nice to have a little relief like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was stuck all day, dude. I had to, I had to take a whiz. I, mean, I, <laughs> I think I had, I don't remember. I think I might have had Miguel watch my table for a minute. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was like, hey, hang out while you go take a whiz. I was, I was like, like either, either you watch my table or I'm going to be like this, <laughs> filling, up a, filling up a bottle. He was, he was kind of like... All right, man. Like, you don't know me like that. I can steal your shit. I was like, <laughs> steal some shit. I gotta go, bro. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing if, about not having somebody to to hang out at the table with you and shit. You yeah. Know I mean? Like, but and, and dude, I do get distracted. I start kind of wandering away from my table. I need a little leash, bro. I get like two, three tables down. And I'm like, fuck. All right. I gotta <laughs> like, kind of like looking over, like see. Over there. I could see it from here. It's got a bunch of slabs. I could see it from here. That's a <laughs> fucking sick ass card. Oh, oh, wait, wait. That's not. That's his phone. That's his yeah. phone. <laughs> yeah, and then or you finally get down there and then you like start asking prices and shit. You're like, oh. <laughs> Either I can't afford that, oh, or oh, that's way too overpriced. I can't make an offer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's something interesting. Like I, I've heard that sentiment from a few people now um it's like that, oh that's just card show prices like is it just kind of a thing is that just kind of how it goes like most dealers are just gonna mark them up like that just because they're at the well show i mean or? there's a difference between marking it up uh 10 or 20 percent because you have to cover some fees for being at the show or because 
uh, you might have the only one in the room or it's like at least semi rare. You can't just go and buy it off of eBay right now for that price. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they sure they've sold on eBay for $20, but is there one on there any maybe right now for $20? No. So if you want to ask 25, 28 for it, 30, I mean, 30 is a little crazy, but you know what I mean? You put that as a starting price and then that way when you take 20, you're hitting the comp. You know? Yeah. But if you're asking, you know, it's a hundred dollar card, you're asking three hundred dollars or some shit. That's that's not card show pricing. That's just greed. Or, that's just well, it, you know, it could be several things. It could be greed, or it could be just they didn't mark down their shit. They didn't you know? have time to recomp and reprice. You know, yeah, and, and I, you know, I, I've been a little bit more understanding of that because, I mean, the prices have dropped faster recently than probably just about ever. You know, so yeah. uh, it's been harder to keep track of. But I mean, there for a while things were fairly steady and they weren't going up and down like insane so when you would see something double comp then it was kind of like what the fuck yeah but when you see something now it's like oh maybe they just haven't marked it down yet you know and yeah that's but true. it is still hard to come at somebody with an offer on that i guess really all you can say is are you firm on that you know and then kind of go from there but yeah when it's literally double or triple it's it's really hard to start and and even if it is them not necessarily being greedy them just not marking their shit down or not having time a lot of the dealers have nine to fives, bro. They're not fucking professional card dealers. And yeah, shit like, that's true. You know, yeah. so <coughs> that's, I've had a that's little true. more empathy for that, but it, it does make it super hard to even make an offer when the sticker price on there is it's so, so outrageous. Yeah, it's so so high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if it's not per se intentional. Right, right. That's true. I got to give more leeway with that because yeah. I see it. I just see it. I actually even hear it. You know what yeah. I mean? I hear people saying it, like dealers. Like talking I try not to, to dealers. take offense if people want a freaking certain amount for their card. And I mean, it's theirs, dude, and it sucks. You're not going to sell it for that price, but I can't get mad at you for that. You know? What yeah. I mean? like, yeah. Excuse me. Don't start that shit. But no. Take um, it to the national, though, or big, gigantic thing like that, and you never know. You might find the sucker, but yeah, I've, I've heard of it. But Yeah. But for at a place like that, then you got for everybody that, that you can find that is going to overpay. There's going to be just as many people trying to shark and underpay you too, mm-hmm. and get a bunch of deals off of you. So yeah, yeah, that's also true. Um, and that I hear this a lot too. I hear dealers dealers talking to other dealers, getting upset that people comp the cards that they are selling, or comp in their prices, and they get a little upset. Some people get downright pissed off. Um. How do you feel about that? Does that bother you if you're like at your table selling cards and somebody says comes up and is like comping it, like gets you a price and then they like let me let me check a comp? Oh, I don't care. They can check the comp, but if they come at me like, um, if they're like without even trying to make any kind of offer or even anything, they just come at me with that right away. Like that's 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 tougher. You know what I mean? Like there's a way to do it. There's like the dance, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't just fucking. Oh, this is the last comp. Will you sell it for that? Like, you have to start the conversation somewhere else first before you can get to that. Yeah, you know what I mean. You yeah, got, you got to like ease in and be like, you got a little room on that. Mm-hmm. You know, well, would you be able to will put a few things together? You know. Yeah, and that's fine if you want to ask them. But if they say no, then don't get sad. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to slide the tip in a little and don't just jam it in there right yeah. away. You and as just... a dealer, you know, you, I get it, bro. You, it's you got fees, you got table fees and and whether you're paying ebay fees or you're paying the fucking setup at a card show you're still paying your fucking fees yeah so if you're selling under comps i mean you're still kind of fucking yourself if you're selling at comps as a dealer what well, people come at you and say oh well the comps 100 on ebay uh you should take 80 because you don't have fees what do you mean i don't have fees yeah fucking table was a couple hundred bucks bro mm-hmm. 50 dollars in gas lunch you know everything else like i have yeah. plenty of fucking fees like, and having to list, listen to this fucking shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking trade up challenge and fucking you know <laughs> right right i have to so, piss and i have to hold it nobody's watching yeah. my table yeah so there's fees it's not yeah. just for you to set up and or when people want to do uh even trades at a show that's always a tough one yeah they don't understand why you don't want to take $100 worth of cards for $100 worth of cards and shit it's cuz I gotta make money, dude. And are you even if you're not made, you have to at least recoup your fucking fees, right? At the very least, yeah. You know, so, and that's tough to do selling under comps. Yeah, it's true. It's next to impossible unless you fucking buy giant collections for fifty percent. Yeah. And if you have the money and the time, and somebody's willing to sell that to you, cool, good for you. You know, that's awesome. I wish I could come into some deals like that, but having gigantic piles of cash isn't always fucking the option either. Yeah, it's true. So. 
it's true. I <clears throat> and 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 they'll a, a lot of times people will come up with like the lowest comp out of the last mm-hmm. like six. Yeah, they'll cherry pick it. You know, it's like, bro, I I could see I have one thirty point also. And yeah. I could see that the one before that sold for like fifty dollars more than that. Yeah. So like, let's. I don't like that last comp shit. Right. Yeah, because the only time anybody says last comp is when they're using it because it's the lowest one. When it's the, to their advantage. Yeah. Yeah. When it's the highest one, they're not saying Because they know that, that it's yeah. off and they know that they can sell it for more. Mm-hmm. They know that that was an, uh, maybe not quite an anomaly, but you know what I mean? It was like an outlier almost. Or right. Like, right. Or the, I need to make my margins on this, bro. Yeah. Like that's rough. Like you, you need to make your margins. I get that. But if you're at the show trying to buy off a of dealer's. Guess who you're talking to? Exactly, bro. You're talking to a motherfucker that needs to make their margins. Yeah, that's like yeah. going to Subway and saying, I'm going to sell this to the guy down the street. Can you give it to me for a dollar off? Right. You know? <laughs> don't work that way. Yeah, that's true. If, if you are if you could take it to the guy down the street and, and charge him for another buck, America. America! <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to take a dollar out of my pocket to put two in your Right, dollars, right. You know? and that's why it used to like bother me that people would flip out. A lot of people in the hobby would flip out about retail flippers mm-hmm. back during the pandemic. They're like, well, what the fuck? There's nothing left for any, anybody. And blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, they found out that they could buy this and flip it for double, sometimes triple. And you're mad at that? You're just mad because you can't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, I, I get it. There's not a bunch of cards to buy. I mean, at that time. But they found that hustle. It's America. Yeah. You know, if they found that they're selling them too cheap, then they, they're, they're hustling. They're trying to do it. Let them do it. It's the same thing that. Yeah, and it caught up to them, bro. There's a bunch of people that got stuck with a ton of shit. I guess, oh, yeah. Shit. And oh, yeah. Them. Absolutely. They made, they, a lot of them probably made a bunch of money, too. But, mm-hmm. you know. People that had bots that were just, like, loading up. And then creating the false rarity because there was none on the shelf because it was all at all the flippers houses. Mm -hmm. So it made it seem like it was hard to find when it was just already all gone before you got there. Right. It's not necessarily rare. It's just all bought up. It's just all gone. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's cool. Worked out for him for a while. And yeah, that's why I never hated on that. Thompson Panini fucking got hip to it. And now the prices are out of whack. And yeah, MJ holdings bumped their shit up. Now it's like 35 a blaster Mm -hmm. now. And so, so wiped it out. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And the, the, the market will take care of itself. It always will. When shit like that happens, though, yeah, so they'll figure it out. Flipper, now you're paying Walmart. Right, right, exactly. And it's the same price, and now everybody's mad. Mm-hmm. Like, we buy a little bit of wax at Walmart. Like, we'll see some decent, like, some of the chromium stuff, and we'll buy it. And it's 35 a blaster, and we'll put it on the table and sell it for 45 Try to make something, you know, but we like to have wax on the table. So people, like, that like wax will come and, like, go the they'll be attracted to come to the table. Mm-hmm. They might see a slab they like while they're there. So it's kind of like... That's why I always used to do it. But yeah, yeah. I would do it as a stand-up <laughs> rep and most of it eventually. Because <laughs> it doesn't sell very fast most of the time. No, no, it. it's... It's it's, a slow, it's dead money. It's yeah. money that's into it just sitting there. Um, but that's, you know, kind of what we're doing. And people will come over and, like, get sad because it's 45 And they're like, mm-hmm. well, it's 35 at Walmart. It's like, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. You can get it there, but you're at a show. Yeah, you know, you could rip it right now with your kid. You could you could buy it and rip it right now. Um, you can't if you want to go to Walmart and get it. You can. You yeah. can, you know it's okay, but like, don't be mad about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, no. And yeah. if you buy multiple boxes, I'll give you a little bit of a deal. You know, and so we're not making we're not getting rich off of it. It's yeah. just you don't want to lose either. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, bro. And even if even if you luck out and only have to pay a hundred dollars for your fucking table, bro. If you only sell a thousand dollars worth of shit, that's ten percent fees right there. Yeah, I mean that's damn near eBay already. Mm-hmm. So. That's true, that's true, and people don't realize that. They don't look at it that way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a damn good point. You sell only five hundred. That's twenty percent. Mm-hmm. You sell whatever you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I mean, that's there's there's fees there too. It's not free to set up at a show. No. So no, it's not. And there's uh, times when there's empty tables and folks will go over there and like put their cards down and like start trading and doing stuff on a table and you want to piss people off at a card show. Jesus, yeah. dude. I, I was watching some of the dealers at one of the last shows when there were some guys doing that and they were like, fuck that shit. And yeah. Like went over there and told them what's up right away. Dealers did. Like the, the promoter didn't even have to deal with it because the dealer's like, nah, man, fuck that. We pay for our tables. We pay for our shit. And like, oh man, they were heated. Yeah. They were heated. Yep. And I was like, dang. 
And it's true, you know, and that's why some of the guys that are like the, the people that are, you know, pe- the the flippers that people get upset about are the guys that are kind of like trying to manipulate some of that and avoid some of the fees and the making deals on other people's tables or with people on the side or, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Showing up with wagons full of shit and like, <laughs> yeah, going dealer to dealer. And if, if, if you're showing up and you're selling to the dealers and obviously the dealers are paying you percentage, then that's one thing. But if you're trying to show up and sell to a bunch of other people, you show up and you make a couple little fucking deals. Nobody gives a fuck. If you're showing up to intentionally try and fucking sell, make multiple like deals at the fucking show, like not as a dealer, but with other fucking customers that are there. That's not really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's true, bro. It's true. When I worked at the pawn shop, we used to have to, we, our boss told us to just throw them out. Yeah. Like they, people would bring their stuff in and they'd want a thousand dollars for something, piece of gold. Yeah. Like, yeah, we can't really do that. You know, I'd probably be at like 600, 700, yeah. something like that. And then they're like, oh, I can't do that. And then the guy that's right next to him in line is like, hey, I'll give you a thousand. Yeah. I'll give you a thousand right now. Yeah. Like, hey, bro, you got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. It's like you're, but you didn't offer him that. I don't give a yeah. fuck. This isn't here for you to make money. Yeah. This is we we have the lights to turn on. They have to pay employees. We have to pay, you know, a lot of money to be in business here. Yeah, and you run into your friend at the show or you make a deal online and you're like, "Oh, well, we'll finish the deal at the show." Right. Who cares? That's no big deal. You know? yeah. Or even even if you do make a few little deals at the show, who gives a fuck, bro? Mm-hmm. You know, nobody cares. No. But if you're sitting at a table and you're putting cards out and Going Basically all the way, posting up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a little rough. Yeah, that's a little rough. Yeah, nope. it's just not cool. Yeah, you know, to nope. each their own. However, you get it done. But don't be surprised if you hear not something. Make a ton of friends that way, <laughs> right? Yeah. So don't be surprised if a Taiwanese dealer comes over and tells you to get the <laughs> fuck off that table. <laughs> yeah, we got your back. <laughs> And that's why at the last Pike Speak, as soon as the somebody didn't show up, broke the ramp, broke down all those tables, so that yeah, people couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Rants on top of that shit, for sure. Per smart. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty damn good at that shit, bro. We just trying to be like you, Pike Speak. <laughs> I just strive to be like you, sir. 